Hello guys, welcome to my video. In this video, I am going to solve two-dimensional Laplace equation in Cartesian coordinate using finite difference technique and inverse matrix method. If you are interested, stay with me. So we have the two-dimensional Laplace equation and this is nothing but a second order partial differential equation. We solved this problem using the finite difference method and iterative technique in the previous video. And we saw that in order to reduce the numerical error, we should increase the iteration number. If you are interested, you can find the previous video in this link. This, at this time, we want to solve the same problem using the inverse matrix method. And let's see how does it works. So, in order to derive the theory, let me consider more general case. And this is uh, just second order derivative with respect to the x, and this is second order derivative with respect to the y. This is the new nodes. So imagine that right part of this function is not zero, and this is a function of x and y. In order to have a solution for such a differential equation, the value of function u and f should be well defined in the region omega and this function u should be infinitely differentiable and also the value of function at the boundary at the boundaries should be well known and if we apply the definition of finite difference we will have such an equation and also if you are not familiar with this definition you can find the derivation of this equation in the previous video so in a finite difference method we discretize the plane and uh, we find the value of function at the discrete point. As usual, we assign index i in y direction and uh, index j in x direction. Right? And if I simplify this equation a little more, just multiple both sides of equation with delta x squared, what we have, this is just this term here and delta x squared divided by delta x squared and I have the same term here. And at the right part, I have delta x squared multiple to the f i j and if I define new uh, parameter I define uh, this with alpha and I define delta x squared with beta and I just substitute the new parameter I have this equation and if I rewrite this equation and I just bring this term at the first and also bring this term at the first of this bracket I just rewrite the same equation right I have here and because I'm going to solve this problem using the MATLAB, and we know that in MATLAB, the zero indexes is not loaded for uh, arrays or matrices, right? So in order to avoid these zero indexes, I shift all these indexes by one. How? I mean that instead of i, I write i plus one. Instead of uh, j, I write j plus one, and this is j plus one minus one, so it will be j and so on and so forth. So I just shift all the indexes by the one and at the right part instead of beta f i j I have beta f i plus one j plus one. So we know that uh, we should find the value of function in this discrete point right. Imagine that it, uh, we have n x plus two uh, number of grid in x direction and n y plus two in a y direction. Y plus 2 because this plus 2 indeed represents the number of index in the lower boundary in the, at the upper boundary and this 2 represents the number of index at the left boundary and uh, right boundary. Uh, let's consider a simple case and imagine that the NAX and NAY both are 2, right? So you see that in general we have a 4 by 4 grids here right one two three four one two three four four by four grid here but this is our boundaries and we know that the value of function at this boundary are known so instead of uh, using four by four grid I just use this two by two grid and this two by two grid is unknown and we are interested to this unknown grid so when after this I'm talking about the dimension of grid, I mean the unknown grid, not the known value that lies on the boundary. 
Uh, so here uh, I should substitute indexes uh, in this equation and I should uh, substitute 1 instead of i and at one more time I should substitute 2 instead of i, right? So let me write this, uh, let me do substitution and here I just uh, substitute 1 instead of i. What I have is u2j minus 2u2j plus 1 so on and so forth. You see I just substitute i instead of, uh, I substitute 1 instead of i. One more time I should substitute uh, 2 instead of uh, i. So what I have is u3j and the rest as you see here. And in this two equation, uh, one more time, I should substitute 1 and 2 instead of j. Uh, what represent the limit, what uh, determine the limit for ij is just the number of grid. You know that uh, here uh, i should be changed from 1 to 2, also j should be changed from 1 to 2. So uh, let me write this equation at the upper here. And I have this equation, I just substitute 1 and 2 instead of i. At this time, I should substitute uh, 1 for j in both equations and 2 for j in both equations, right? I mean, one time I substitute 1 here instead of j, I have u21 and the rest you see here. And if I substitute j equal 2 at the first equation, what I have is u22 and the rest like this you see. Now in the second equation I should substitute 1 for the j. What I have is u31, right? And the rest like this you see here. And if I substitute j equal 2 in the second equation, what I have is u32 minus u2 minus 2 u33, so on and so forth. And at the right part I have beta f33 because I have 3 here and if I put 1 here, I will have beta multiple to f33, right? And uh, let me again bring this equation a little upper. I have the same equations that I derived, right? If you look at these equations, you see there are some common terms. Let me simplify it and uh, bring out the common terms out of this bracket, right? And if I simplify it here, the common term is u22, right? Uh, the sec in the second one, the common term is u to 3, one is here and the other is here, so the coefficient will be minus 2 multiple to 1 plus alpha, 2 here and 2 alpha here, right? And I just multiple this alpha inside this bracket and rewrite the system of equation like this, right? And if I remind the grids that we defined, you see, uh, some of this term in the system of equation lies on the boundary. For example, in the first equation, you see that u21 lies on the boundary. This is known value, right? Also, u12 lies in the lower boundary. This is known. And the second, u24 lies on the right boundary. This is known value. And u13 lies at the lower boundary. This is known value. And the third one, known value is u31 and u42 it lies here and here and at the last equation u34 here and u43 here they all lies under boundaries and they are known so let me bring the all known terms to the right part of the system of equation and keep the coefficient and the unknown terms at the left part right and all the unknown terms is this one, this one, this, and this, as you see here, u22, u23, u32, u33, and at the rest, you, we have the same, u33 here. So if I bring known value to the right, what I have is a, such a system of equation, and all the value at the right is known and at the left we have some coefficient that is known and some unknown value. I can write the system of equation in a matrix form and I can write it in a uh, form like a multiple to the u uh, become equal to some matrix f and let me define the new parameter and I define b with 2 multiple to 1 plus alpha here this this coefficient I define it 
by B. And if I rewrite the system of equation in a matrix form, what I have is like this. You see, this is a, a coefficients matrix, right? And this is a unknown matrix, and this is a known matrix. And if I know the matrix A, and I know the matrix F, I can simply find the unknown matrix U, that is just a number of function at the grid point, unknown grid point, uh, with a minus one multiple to the f, and this is the inverse of matrix A. And if you uh, let you check, do we drive this uh, uh, this uh, matrix for correctly or not? If you look at the system of equation, you see, for example, is there any u two two in the first equation? First equation, yes, we have u two two here. What is the coefficient? The coefficient is minus b. So we write minus b here. So do we have u two three in the first equation? Yes, here. What's the coefficient? Coefficient is one. So this is correct. Also, do we have u three two? Yes, we have u three two in first equation, and the coefficient is alpha. We write this coefficient here. Do we have u thirty three at the first equation? Let's see. No, there is not u thirty three. So the coefficient should be zero. And you can check uh, the uh, the all the rest term just simply like this and if you look at this matrix you see that when the uh, number of grids is 2 by 2 right unknown grid is 2 by 2 we found a 4 by 4 matrix for a right so uh, keep it in your mind let's go further and uh, let's define the new number of grids and let's imagine the number of grids in x direction is 3 number of grids in y direction is 2 so we repeat the same procedure and we have the equation the original equation that we derived and we shift the index this is the same equation so this time i should change from 1 to 2 and j should change from 1 to 3 so one time i substitute 1 instead of i here and another time i substitute 2 instead of i here when i substitute 1 i have u 2 j rest like this and here when I substitute one here I have u 3j and the rest should be like this now in this equations I should substitute j and one time I should substitute one instead of j the other time I should substitute two instead of j and finally I should substitute three instead of j in both equations so at the first equation I just substitute one I have u2 one and the rest like this I substitute 2 instead of j in the first equation. I have u22 and the rest like this. And when I substitute 3 here, I have u23. So the first one is over. Now the second. If I substitute 1, I have u31 and just substitute the rest and it will be like this. If I substitute 2 here, I have u32. And if I substitute 3 here, I have u33. Like this. And if uh, I again multiply this alpha inside this bracket and uh, take factor the co uh, take factor out the common terms and bring the uh, known value from the uh, boundaries to the right part of the system of equation, I will end up with this. You see, all value all terms here u two one u one two u one three and the rest are known. And how we can def how we can recognize it? You see that here, the lower value for the index j for index i that represent the index in the y direction should be one. So any term here, any terms in the system of equation that's contained one for j lies on the boundary, like u two one. And also we know that the minimum value for the index j should be one. So any term here, j is this one and i is this one. Any term with the index j equal to 1 is known, lies on the boundary. And from this, we know that the maximum indexes for i, that is in y direction, should be 4. So any term with the indexes 4 for the i, like this one. You see this, this, and this. The, the i for i here all are 4 right so they should also lies on the boundaries right 
and we know that the maximum value for index j should be 3.2 and this is 5 so any terms with the indexes 5 for the j like this one and this one they also lies on the boundary and they are not and you can simply for even the uh, the other number of grid you can simply by taking into account the minimum value for the i minimum value for the j and the maximum value for the i and maximum value for the j you can find the terms that lies on the boundary and you bring to the right part all the known value from boundaries and at the left we have the unknowns and the coefficient the matrix and if i write it in a matrix form i will end up with such a equation system of equation and you see that when number of grids is 2 by 3 number of indeed number of unknown grids is 2 by 3 we have a 6 by 6 matrix for a you see here we have 6 and here we have 6 no uh, so also keep uh, keep this matrix in your uh, mind and if i repeat the same for the other number of grids for example for 3 by 2 I will end up with such a matrix again we have a 6 by 6 matrix and you see when number of grids is 3 by 2 it is 6 so matrix should be 6 by 6 and if we compare these two matrix that this one is for 2 by 3 and this one is for 3 by 2 you see that the A matrix is different also F matrix is different but at this time just uh, uh, just look at the let's focus on the a matrix and try to uh, uh, reproduce the A matrix for any arbitrary number of points in X and Y direction. Let me uh, find uh, the matrix A for another number of points and this time I just want to find the number of points uh, the, matrix, uh, the matrix A or the system of equation in a matrix form for uh, 3 by 3 right and if I repeat the same procedure I will end up with such a matrix for A this is unknown matrix and this is known matrix F and you see that here number of uh, grids is a uh, 3 by 3 right 3 by 3 and we and uh, 3 by 3 will uh, 3 times 3 is 9 and we found such a 9 by 9 matrix 9 9 right okay so let me recall the first well, the first matrix A that we found and if you look at this matrix carefully you see that there is a diagonal term and all uh, terms on this uh, diagonal are constant and this is minus B and if you look you see that we have almost a constant diagonal for a upper diagonal right here we have almost one and another upper diagonal term is alpha and alpha and if you look it you see that this is uh, symmet this is symmetry this is a symmetry matrix with respect to the main diagonal right we have the same at the upper triangle matrix that we have at the lower part you see so this is a, a symmetric matrix and if we recall the matrix for 2 by 3 you see we have again uh, this uh, terms on the main diagonals all are constant and minus b and we have a upper diagonal one and another upper diagonal one and again this is symmetric with respect to the uh, main diagonal right and again for 3 by 2 we have the same constant let's for a while imagine that all is constant 1 1 1 1 this is not one but let's imagine that this is constant and also uh, this is also constant in this diagon right again this is symmetric and for 3 by 3 we have the same situation constant the up diagon and another up diagon right and this is again symmetric so at this point let's try to uh, write a code and try to find the matrix a for any arbitrary number of points so at this time I suggest let's go to the MATLAB and try to do this so I have the MATLAB opened here 
let me define new script right here we add a new script now let's start with clc clear and close all right okay so what we need is mx and this is uh, 2 and ny number of grid in y direction and let's start uh, to generate the most simple one. We start with when a uh, number of grids is 2 by 2. That's why I defined nx and ny equal to 2, right? So what else we need? We need the dimension of matrix and we know that it should be nx multiple to ny. nx multiple to ny. What else we have? Alpha. And we know that this is delta x is squared divided by delta y is squared, but for a now let's uh, define it with a constant value and define it with half. What else we have? This is b coefficient, and this is 2 multiple to uh, 1, 1 plus alpha, right? So, what else we need? And x and y, k, alpha, alpha, and B. Okay, let me save it. Save as here. I save it with a matrix. Matrix. Okay. Save it. Okay. Uh, so if we look at this matrix, uh, we can see that we can decompose this matrix into three matrix. One is diagonal matrix. The other is upper diagonal, and another upper diagonal like this so for for now let's create a diagonal matrix with a dimension of 4 by 4 for that I defined an array uh, array I define it with array 1 and array 1 is just a unity array once and this is one uh, row and k column All right let's check we have a, a 1 by 4 array, right? 1 by k and k is 4. Right? Okay. And using, uh, and let's define a diagonal with a diag and using diag command, D I A G, diag array 1, uh, we can create a diagonal matrix. Let's check it. You see and we have a 4 by 4 matrix and the main diagonal is 1 but here our matrix main diagonal is minus b so it's enough to multiple this uh, matrix by minus b and here alpha is half so b should be 1 plus half 1 point half 2 multiple to 1 point half it should be 3 and b should be minus 3 let's check it yes and we create this one Right now, let's uh, create an uh, up diagonal matrix. Right, and for that, we see that here the dimension of this array. If we we define this array and its dimension was k, right, and k is four. But this one, this one, uh, dimension of this array should be three. Let's show array. Define the new array with array 2 and this is nothing but ones 1 control v 1 instead of k k minus 1 it's uh, 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 1 less than 4 this is 3 right let's check the array 2 right yes we have a 1 by 3 array and let's define a up diagonal which a up Diag one and it should be using diag command array two and uh, this time we shift we should let's see what we have for uh, a up diag one you see we have a three by three matrix right three by three matrix and this one lies on the main diagonal but we don't want it we want to uh, this one uh, lies in the upper diagonal, right? So in order that we just add a one here to shift it 
one cell to the uh, right. You see, and now we have a four by four matrix, and we have a upper uh, diagonal, and we have indeed a non-zero uh, upper diagonal. And we have, we should define this one in order that its dimension should be uh, two, right? We need another array, array three, and this is nothing but once and it should be 1 by k minus 2 right because here when we have a 4 by 4 it should be 2 right and again using diagon command a up diag 2 and using diag command array three and we should shift it shift it by two let's see right and we have this uh, diagonal up diagonal matrix here right but this is not one and this is alpha right and so it's enough to multiply it with alpha right let's see and because alpha is half so we have a half here so we create three matrix here right the main diagonal upper diagonal and another upper diagonal but uh, so if we add the three matrix we created the upper triangle matrix and if we create the symmetric uh, lower triangle matrix and add these two matrix together we can create this one but before that we see that sum element here for example this one is zero right and we indeed here in up diagonal one we should somehow uh, make this term equal to zero and in order that we can let me put semicolon here to don't have the output at the command window right and I don't need this one. This is the main diagonal. I don't need any change for this one, right? And I need changes for up diagonal matrix. And you see that the zero term is here and it lies in two in that uh, second row and the third column. So here I should be two and J should be three. So Let's define the loop for uh, i for i from one to n x right, and let's say that this matrix uh, up diag one control C this matrix control V up diag one at uh, n x and n x plus one become zero right let's check it and okay let's create matrix here i mean this one print matrix command window here and let's check it you see using this command we made this matrix zero right okay and uh, now let me add these two matrix together the two up diagonal matrix together and define it with a up right and this is nothing but up diagonal one control c control with this one plus up diagon to control C control V right and okay uh, let me check okay right I added these two matrix and create the upper uh, triangle matrix that I have here for NAX 2 by 2 you see we have uh, 1 0 1 alpha alpha 0 
and again here we have one zero one alpha alpha zero right and at this time let me create the lower triangle matrix and we can do it just by defining defining a down right a down this is nothing but uh, let's uh, make this octagonal matrix inverse not the inverse in that we create the symmetry of octagonal matrix by using a up point uh, this apostrophe sign and it should give us the a uh, down a down and this is just the uh, the lower triangle matrix let's check it you see we have the up 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 triangle matrix and we have a down triangle matrix and if we add this matrix to each other let's say let's define it with a one for example and uh, this is a up plus a down right let's see how does it look like looks like you see we create the upper diagonal right one zero one alpha alpha zero and one zero one alpha alpha zero and if we add the main diagonal matrix we created the a matrix and so a matrix should be a this one a diagonal control c control v plus and this a one control c Control V and let's check. We should create the final A matrix. And you see, indeed, here we have the main diagonal is minus 3, and this is nothing but minus B. And at the upper diagonal, we have 1, 0, 1, and here we have half and half. Indeed, this is alpha, and we have the same uh, symmetric matrix, symmetric uh, lower triangle matrix here. Okay, so here we create the A matrix for uh, 2 by 2, right? Let's go further and try to create the matrix when NY is 2 and NX is 3. And let's see how does it looks like, right? Uh, let me just unduck this... Uh, this editor file here, where is it? Okay, undock here, and I see better the command window better here, right? So uh, we say that let's increase this number of grid in the x by one and try two by three number of grid, right? And we should generate this matrix and this is one, one, zero, one, one, right? Okay. And so NAX should be 3 and NY should be 2. Okay, we have uh, 2 by 3 or 3 by 2, no matter. And let's run it by pressing F5. Uh, you see, we have from the dimensionality point of view, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 by 6 matrix, right? And this one is 0 like this right and uh, we have alpha here but alpha should goes one cell uh, to the left i mean this diagonal should shift it one cell here in order to do this if you look at here in the creating of array 3 we say that it should be 1 k minus 2 and uh, if we replace this 2 with nx here and also shift it with nx here, we can create the matrix and the correct matrix and shift this uh, uh, diagonal element one cells to the uh, right. In that, let's press 5. Press 5. You see, we have alpha at the right 
position alpha 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 here and this is half half represent the alpha and we have one one uh, zero one one and we have the same here and this is the final matrix for uh, the case of uh, for the case of uh, three by two right uh, okay now let's uh, try the higher dimension for number of grid and for example let's uh, uh, try uh, here, let's try it for uh, instead of 3 by 2, let's try it for uh, the next one. Let's try it to, to the next one. And the next matrix that we drive here, it was 2 by 3, 2 by 3, and 3 by 2. Let's check the 3 by 2 matrix, right? Okay, and it should be, and x should be 2 ny should be 3 right let's check it what we have here and f5 you see if we compare with this matrix you see we have the main diagonal we have the up diagonal one here right but 1 0 1 ah it should be 0 but we see that this time this is a 1 and the other should be one it's correct so there's an error here but the alpha is the right position you see alpha 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 here and this alpha no this is not in the right position you see uh, we have we should somehow shift uh, this alpha to the uh, one cell to the right before that let's uh, let's solve this one here we should have zero in order to have zero we create the zero in the loops right in the loop right and it was for the case when n x and n y equal to each other right mm. uh, okay let me think just for a while okay for solving of the position of this uh, alpha it should be lies here so let's uh, define a condition here and we say that we use this uh, this loop only when uh, the nx and ny is equal to each other so we write if nx equal to ny we should use this command and uh, we this command and it should be here and right but let's define another condition I just copy this control C control V and when an X is uh, uh, an X is less than NY right now you see that NY is greater than NX so when NY is greater than NX instead of ny if i put instead of nx in the in the slope ny let's see how does it look does it works or not and you see here uh, it doesn't work so Okay, first of all, in order to don't confuse the nx and ny, let's write first ny and then nx. And we looking for this matrix, so ny is 3, ny is 3, and nx is 2. Let's run it again, pressing F5, and you see the position of alpha is in right place you see for 3 by 2 alpha is uh, close to this uh, diagonal array right so we see that alpha is right pos is in right position and the second value on this diagonal is zero like what we have here this is zero but the third one is one and the fourth one 
again is zero but here the first one is not zero we should make it somehow equal to zero and we see that this is zero when n uh, when the i is two and j is three and it should be zero when i is four and j is five so we can fix it just instead of uh, making this terms only in one n x and uh, n x plus one if we put i here in a integer in an integer uh, n x and n x plus one they should be zero and let's check it ah there is an error here and the matrix dimension must agree because we have i n x here right let's reduce it by one see ah okay you see we just reduced the maximum value for i and it's fixed we have the true matrix here if we compare it here you see one zero one zero one and here one zero one zero one and alpha is right position and everything is okay right so i think here also we should put integer value of nx and nx plus y nx plus one right and it should works for two by two for example f5 ah it's an error and if we reduce the maximum for this loop by one it should works yes and here you see I press F5 again we have the correct matrix alpha alpha 101 and this is the main diagonal uh, element right now it works for 2 by 2 it should works also for 4 for example for 4 by 4 right let's see ah it's a little big but if we compare we see that one 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 zero one 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 zero one 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 zero and i think this is correct right let's uh, check for the another value for nx and ny which one let's try uh, when nx is two and ny is three where is it Ah, oh, here, this one. When n x is no, we are looking for mm, yes, n x n y two and n x three. This one. We have two and we have n x three. Let's check it. We see that we have one, 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 and the alpha is in a right position, but something is wrong, and this one, this one here should be zero. And for that, let's define another loop when the nx greater than n1. Control C. Control V and when n x is greater than n y, uh, where is it? When n x, this one should be zero, right? Uh, so uh, what we can do? Let me think. Mm. Ah, here, here, let's check this one. When nx greater than n0, it should be nx f5. There's an error. And if we reduce it by 2, and we see that this is works, right? But what is 2 here? 2 here is the difference of nx and ny. Is 1 difference of nx and y plus 1. Let's find in a more general case in 
x minus n y right plus one let's check it f y and it works so let's check one more time for two by two f y it works right for two by three two by three yes let's check it f5 it works we compare it we see one one zero one one zero right okay and for the case of three by two three by two f5 let's check it with three by two where is it two by two ah uh, for three by two this one one zero one zero one let's check it one zero one zero one and everything is correct here so now we have another matrix for three by three and we have the reference for cd by three we calculated so let's check the three by three matrix by this code right and I'm just interested to the last matrix, so let's put semicolon here and here and here. Don't see the rest, and I just delete this one, right? And I will see the final matrix, the A1. Okay, for 3 by 3, let's press F5, and we see that. 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 let's check it 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 and alpha is separated by a, another zero diagon with the, this this one diagon and this is i think correct yes this is separate so here using this code we created uh, an algorithm that can uh, generate the A matrix for any uh, arbitrary point, arbitrary point in X and Y direction, and we can check it for higher order, like four by four, and it should be true. Although we don't have reference, but I think it works. So let's go on and see uh, how we can create the F matrix. So we generated the F matrix, right? We generated the A matrix. Now let's uh, take a look to the take a look to the F matrix and see how uh, does it looks like. Let me choose the there's a pointer here, and uh, I uh, write the uh, the F matrix for two by two grid. Now let's see which one relies on uh, which row of this matrix. If you look at the first. Row, you see that U21 and U12 U12 is in the first boundary, uh, U24 and U13 in the second, U31 and U42 in the third, and finally U34 uh, and U43 uh, lies in the uh, last uh, last uh, row. And uh, let's define some uh, some uh, boundary condition like this. And the lower boundary we have zero. At the left boundary we have zero. At the upper minus one, and minus two for the right boundary. And uh, because uh, we are interested now to solve the um, Laplace equation, this f function should be zero. So I just put this function equal to zero, and I have the rest here. And if I substitute this boundary conditions, this value of from boundary uh, in this matrix uh, u21 is 0 minus and i define again alpha with half and we have half multiple to u12 and 12 also is 0 so the first one is 0 and u24 here is minus 2 minus minus plus minus alpha multiple to u13 and u13 this one is 0 so the second row will be 2 and the third row is u31 u31 is uh, zero this one minus alpha is half u four two this is one minus minus plus we have half here and u three four where is it three uh, four is minus two minus minus plus minus half multiple to 
u for 3 this one is minus so it's also will be plus and we have two point half so we have this f function when the number of uh, dimensional grades is 2 by 2 and if I repeat uh, the substitution for 3 by 2 I will have this matrix for f as you see here right and uh, for uh, 2 by 3 uh, 2 grid in the uh, y direction and 3 grid in x direction I will have such a form for f matrix and finally when I have 3 by 3 unknown grid and applying the same uh, boundary condition on this f matrix we will have 0 0 2 0 0 2 half half and two point half so uh, we found the f matrix for different number of grids let's uh, again go to the MATLAB and uh, write codes for uh, for the f matrix uh, first of all let me put a semicolon here I don't need this a matrix anymore right okay let me allocate a memory for u and this u will be the uh, numerical result and numerical solution it's let me uh, write it with zeros zeros and we have a n x plus 2 in n y uh, plus 2 right and let me check okay press f5 uh, so Yes, which one we see here? What is this big matrix? A diagon. Okay, let me disable this A diagon. Where is it? This one. Okay, F5. So we have now, uh, let's define NY and NX both equal to 0, F5. So we have a 4 by 4, 0 matrix. And if we define the boundary condition, right? I want to define the uh, boundary boundary conditions, right? So uh, at the uh, at the left boundary uh, for first uh, for first row and all column, it should be zero, right? Uh, okay and u at the left at the upper boundary n y uh, plus two four all column we define it with minus one right uh, minus one okay and uh, in the uh, lower boundary uh, in the lower boundary for all rows and first column right it should be again zero at the lower boundary for for uh, uh, for first row uh, for first uh, row right and all columns it should be zero right and uh, and the left boundary we should have we should have an uh, x and x plus 2 and the last boundary we define it with minus 2 let's check it mm, a matrix ah there's an error here ah it should not be semicolon it should be this one and uh, let's make a semicolon here and here and here and again let me see the your matrix f5 you see we we find the boundary condition like this this is minus one minus two and zero zero right now let's uh, let's assign uh, this boundary values to the f matrix so i allocate a memory another memory for f and it should be uh, zeros k row and one column let's see yes and for two by two you uh, so that we have uh, this one a four by one matrix right we have a four by one 
and created created it here okay so let's show uh, assign uh, this boundaries this boundaries condition to the f matrix using a uh, loop so for for i uh, for i from uh, 1 to nx right and i just want to do ah what I write in a command window so see I will see I should write here okay here uh, so we say that we define the loop for I from 1 uh, for I from 1 to n x right uh, it should be and and for for j from one to n y again and right I define a parameter here c equal to one and it represents the uh, the index of uh, f matrix right so uh, let's check let's look at to the matrix uh, this one and uh, uh, you see that when uh, the j is equal to 1, right? When the j is equal to 1, we should assign this u to the f matrix, right? So we say that if j equal to 1, and let's assign fc equal to fc, assign minus u right u uh, when j is equal to 1 so it should be uh, j is when j is equal to 1 so we have i plus 1 here this is 1 and this is 2 so when we have j here it should be i plus 1 right so uh, i plus 1 and j we assign that just uh, u i plus 1 and j to the F matrix, right? Again, uh, if I uh, become equal to one, and we assign, I just copy it from here. Control C, Control V. Uh, we assign alpha one two, and when the I is equal to one, so J should be. Uh, uh, the in the second index should be j plus one because this is when this is one this is two right and okay let's it's first multiple it with alpha alpha multiple okay and when i is equal to one it should be i and j plus one right okay now uh, let's take a look to the last uh, last row and try to uh, see uh, generate this last row. We we just take into account the first boundary and the last boundary in both uh, x direction and y direction. So we consider the lower boundary with index i. Now let's consider the uh, maximum boundary. If if and uh, if uh, j if j uh, become equal to n uh, x right and let me copy it again here control c control v okay we say that what happened when j is equal to n x and we see that when j is equal to n x and the maximum value for n x should be two right should be four so here we should have uh, j plus 2 and what is i index when j is uh, maximum i index is a less than maximum one uh, less than maximum but this time it should be uh, because n y because n y is 2 and this is uh, 3 right so it should be i plus 1 and j plus 2 Okay, 
control z control z and let me create another condition when i is maximum so when uh, i that represent the index in y direction is become equal to and y what do we have here we see that when i is uh, 2 i here we have the maximum index and it should be i plus 2 and it should be j plus 1 i plus 2 and it should be j plus 1 and with the coefficient alpha right and just copy it here and paste it here right okay let's look at to the f matrix f matrix does it works this uh, to generate the f or not so let's press F5, F5, where is the F? Uh, something is not true here. Ah, here we forget to add the when a loop is ended, we should add index one index to the C to generate the other uh, rows, right? Because when here we have C1, so we generate the first row, then we should go to the next row and then press F5 you see we have 0 2 half 2 point half for the case of a 2 by 2 we have 0 2 half 2 point half so it's perfect and it works let's check for the other uh, number of index for example for 3 by 2 when ny is 3 and nx is 2 and y3 and x is 2 let's see how much do we have f5 we have uh, 0 2 1 0 2 0 right uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay we have a 6 by 6 in a case of 3 by 2 uh, something is wrong we have zero we should have zero two zero two half two point of zero two something is wrong let me uh, think for a while oh, we have a mistake here here I should change from one to n y right uh, and j should change from one to n x because j represent the index in the x direction and I represent it in one direction because in the previous one n x was equal to and why we had the true value for f now that n y and n 2 is different we should assign the correct in correct value uh, for uh, corresponding index so if we press f5 for 3 by 2 right for 3 by 2 we see that we have 0 2 0 2 half 2 point half 0 2 0 2 half 2 point half and let's check for the other one or two by three what we should have for two by three it should be zero zero two half half two point half let's check uh, f5 zero zero two half half two point half okay great we have now f matrix for uh, arbitrary number of uh, grid and this is perfect because we just assigned uh, the in the loop we in the writing the code uh, in a logic we just consider the first uh, the first row and the last row and the all other term generated inside its loop automatically and for a final one let's check the uh, 3 by 3 for 3 by 3 where is it this one we should have 0 0 2 0 0 2 half half 2 point half let's check it and for 3 by 3 f5 let's see here okay we have 0 0 2 0 0 2 half half 2 point half and we have the same and this is perfect now that we generate the a matrix and generate f matrix now it's enough to calculate the uh, the unknown u using the uh, uh, multiplying by the uh, inverse uh, inverse of matrix a to the f right 
Okay, so let's modify this code and try to uh, define the boundary condition and calculate the rest. And let me recall you that uh, we, uh, in the previous video, we uh, find the analytical solution of Laplace equation with this boundary condition, right? Uh, and we found such a solution. And because I'm going to uh, compare this solution with the analytical solution, the numerical solution with analytical one, so let me, instead of defining uh, this boundary, uh, boundary condition, let me define the, this boundary condition. So what should have here? Instead of one, it should be instead of one, it should be uh, sine x divided by sine b, and this one should be um, sine hyperbolic uh, y, right? Sine hyperbolic y, and uh, for simplicity here, I imagine that omega is one. So though I don't consider the omega one, so it should be sine hyperbolic y divided by sine hyperbolic b. And we don't have a and b here. This one should be a, and this one should be b. Okay, let's define a and b here. Let's define a with 3 pi, like previous and b with pi okay let's check do, do we have the boundaries here the new boundary you press f5 ah oh, what is x ah oh, we didn't define also the x okay we have a and b a is 3 pi and b is pi right B is pi. Uh, we have another B here. So let's define this one with uh, capital B, right? We have this with capital B. And now we have NY and NX. We have A uh, here. We just define it to be 3 pi and we define this boundary become 2 pi, right? Okay, let's uh, define the x dx dx should be a divided by number of point uh, number of points in x direction, and it should be n x plus one, right? And uh, dy it should be b divided by in the x direction, it should be n y, right, plus one. Okay, and let's uh, change x from zero, zero, with dx x step to the a, and define and change y from zero with steps d y to the uh, to the b, right. Okay, what else? What else? I think it should work now. Let's check it. F5, yes, uh, we have now this uh, new boundary condition. This is U matrix. This is uh, after assigning the boundaries and this is F matrix for the new boundary condition, right? Let's go on. So we generate the f, let's remove this one from here and put a semicolon here. I don't want to see it anymore and remove this one from here and put a semicolon from here. Now that we have the u, we have the a, we can calculate the u matrix. I define it with a small u. Indeed, this uh, uh, little u represents the solution in the unknown grid, right? But this capital U that I define here, this is the uh, value of function at the algorithm. So now I have the boundary condition and I'm uh, trying to calculate this unknown grid and I define with the little u. And it should be, you can using the line solve uh, 
command uh, A and F. Or you can directly calculate the inverse matrix of A and multiply it with the U. Uh, so let's see does it works or not. Uh, line solve. I think the command is wrong. We don't. Okay, I think we should have a line solve. F5. Okay, now you see that we have the U matrix here. And this matrix is a just a, uh, it's, it's just an array, but we should convert it to a rectangular. This is a linear array, and we should convert it to rectangular array, right? Because uh, we saw that the U matrix here should be uh, here. You see, it, it's in an array form, and but we are interested uh, to rearrange them in the uh, in a matrix form, not the linear one in two-dimensional matrix, right? So for that, let me define UR, the reshape U, and allocate a memory zeros, right, zeros. Uh, it should be N, Y, N, X, right? Let's check. F5, okay. We should somehow uh, put this uh, this value in this matrix. This one, this one, and this one in this row. This, this, and this in this row. And the rest, this one, and this one, and this one in this row. So let's do it in a uh, in a loop again for uh, i from 1 to nx, right? And uh, for j from 1 to ny. Ah, again, it should be y, not i change from 1 to ny, i represent the y direction, and j change from 1 to nx represent the x direction, and, and let's define another parameter, for example, with p, the index for the f, the index for this u matrix with 1, right, and uh, we want to assign f uh, this the terms of this u matrix in u r matrix in i and j. We should have uh, u p, and here we should uh, increase the number of p. Uh, here I think p. We should increase the number of p to have. Let's check it. And uh, oh, let me put a semicolon here. F5 and see the UR here, the reshaped matrix. F5. Now, uh, this one is located here. This one located here, and you see this one located here, and the rest also located in the right place. This one located here, this one located here, and the, uh, this one is located here. So everything is right, and we change the uh, the form of matrix U in a uh, in a linear in a in a rectangular form, right? In two dimensional form. So I don't want this U R here, but we have. U R, right? We have U R for unknown grid. Let's add the boundary condition that we defined before to this matrix, right? So I using again a loop. I just copy this one. Control C, Control V here, and here I want to use the capital U and assign the the value for uh, assign the unknown grid to the uh, capital U. And it should be U R, right? U R I and J, because we know that uh, we we have the value of function U from the boundary at the, the lower boundary and at the left boundary. That's why we have plus one here and plus one here. Let's check it. Is it true or not? We want to see matrix U here. We don't need. This one for now. Okay, F5. You see, uh, 
uh, we have the same UR. Let's see, we just UR both here. F5. You see, this is UR, and we add this central grid to the uh, to the general uh, solution that we consider uh, uh, consider for this partial differential equation. Just we add this U uh, UR matrix inside the uh, general solution U. Now uh, we have the numerical value, right? And let me define it with U N. Let me define it with capital U N and U N represent the numerical solution numerical solution right and I'm interested to normalize the solution this numerical solution to the maximum value so in order to find the max of u n max u n uh, we should use uh, max command u n an empty bracket and all, all, it will give us the maximum for uh, UN matrix. Let's check it. Uh, no, this command is ah, this should be capital N, right? F5. You see, we have the maximum one, and we want to have normalized solution. Okay, and let's call it with the new UN should be un divided by max u n and let's see yes we have the normalized one now uh, so let's uh, plot it and i will use the surf command uh, surf uh, u n f5 and this is the solution of uh, numerical value. Okay, let's use the previous command that I had it before. Uh, so instead of uh, surf, let me use the counter f. Uh, con contour f. I want to plot this one. Let me put a semicolon here. Right, okay, counter F. Okay, it's right, and let's increase the number of contour with uh, to 200, and I don't want the black line, so uh, the line color, line color should be none. F5, okay, and the color map I want to use color map to be jet 256 we change the color map okay change the color map let's add the title here the title should be numerical recall right numerical x label lay x label should be x y label should be y control c control v y label should be y and the color map is the jet family and we need a color bar and color axis should change from minus 1 to 1 because we have the normalized function f5 okay and uh, so let's uh, increase the number of grid uh, like the let's define 50 in a y direction and 100 in x direction indeed it should be 52 uh, in 100 right and let's see uh, what is the wrong mm, 50 and y and 100 in this extraction unable to perform 
assignment to this one. Why? Let me think. Okay, let's run it again. If why there is an error, let's see how much is size x because there is a error in a matching of the size size x is one in one hundred two and size uh, u how much is size u it's one hundred two in fifty two it should be reversed fifty two in one hundred two ah I think here when we locate memory for u matrix here it should be n y plus two n then x plus two and press it again and it's work right you see uh, okay okay now we have the numerical result let's find the analytical solution I want to uh, find here the analytical uh, solution I find it inside the loop because I have the analytical uh, answer for Laplace equation here so I calculate it inside loop for I uh, from 1 to uh, n y plus 2 n right j from 1 to n x plus 2 and for ah I forget for for okay mm -hmm. now we need uh, u analytical in a i n j this is sine x uh, j right divided by sine a multiple to the sine hyperbolic uh, y i divided by sine hyperbolic sine hyperbolic uh, b right and before that let's allocate memory for u a u analytical should be like this zero run this one control c Control V. Okay, and uh, let me use the same command plot. Control C, Control V, and this time it should be analytical. 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 A, A, and A should again be analytical and again this one call and let's have the both plot here I just add a bigger here bigger here and let's press F5 ah uh, oh let me stop it because I didn't put semicolon somewhere and it shows the all output at the command window. Okay, let's check it. Where, ah, here we go. I should semicolon here and press a five. You see this is a numerical solution and this is analytical solution. I think somewhere we have a mistake because they should
completely looks like each other. Let me check to find the state where is it. Okay, let's calculate the error first and uh, then find where is our mistake. And here, let me calculate the error. Error and uh, I define it with E and it should be uh, U and uh, U analytical minus U numerical. And let me use the same command for plotting of error, right? And it should be E. Let's check. Mm, this is indeed error, not D. And error, right? F5. Okay, you see we have some error between uh, analytical and numerical. And this error is significant. So let me find where is our mistake in calculating the differential equation numerically. Let me close this one and check the code one more time. Ah, here, I found a mistake here. Here, alpha should not be half. It is not constant. It is constant, but it should be uh, dx divided by dy square, right? Square, and let's check it. F5. Uh, you see, error is uh, zero at everywhere and the numerical solution is exactly fitted to the uh, analytical solution as you see here this is numerical one and this is uh, numerical one analytical one and this is error that is uh, almost zero at everywhere so uh, we calculate the uh, Laplace uh, differential equation using the inverse matrix method in comparison to the iterative method. We saw that we calculated it directly and without having any iteration at the first uh, calculation, we have exactly the true solution. Uh, and this is perfect, although uh, this time writing the code is a little complicated in comparison to the uh, iterative method, but uh, here I think this code is more faster because we don't need uh, to calculate it inside loop. So uh, depend on what you need, maybe uh, you can use uh, one of these method methods. So if you like this video, please uh, uh, like and uh, share my video and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you very much.